What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. That's H-A-W-G sports.com. Everybody like winning? Arkansas with another win, 86-69 over Tennessee. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to go over some of our top 10 second-year players for Arkansas football. Uh, We'll talk about some decommitments and how they have been doing at other programs since 2018. And we'll get into your questions, of course. We'll discuss some other things. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. All that and more on Hog Sports Live. So everybody likes winning. Everybody likes winning. Arkansas now two in a row since they've got Isaiah Joe back. I think he's averaging 21 and a half points a game since he's been back. Three rebounds. Definitely has made a big difference. But Mason Jones, 37 points, 11 and 19 from the floor, 12 of 15 on free throws. So Mason did a couple of interesting things. Not only did he join the 1,000-point club at Arkansas, Let's see, with a made free throw at the 15-58 mark of the first half, Jones became the 48th Razorback to score 1,000 or more career points. He was the fifth fastest player in school history to accomplish the feat as he reached 1,000 points in just 61 games. He's one of eight players in Arkansas history to do it in two seasons. That's not the only thing that Mason did. He also made some SEC history. This is according to the ESPN stats. Arkansas's Mason Jones has hit – his, excuse me, Arkansas's Mason Jones has his 70th 30-point game of the season, tying Marcus Thornton from 2008 to 2009 and Jody Meeks from 2008 to 2009 for the most 30-point games in a season by an SEC player over the last 20 years. That's impressive stuff. So that ties the record. So he can set it. I think he may. He's got three games left to do it. Arkansas right now is 6-9 and nine in the SEC, 8-10 and 10 overall. Still very much a bubble team. If you look at bracket matrix, they use like 100 different brackets. None of them are like ESPN or CBS. It's probably a lot of them that you haven't heard of before. Some of them you have. But Arkansas is in 11 of those, and they're listed as the first four out right now. Arkansas has Georgia at Georgia who just came off an overtime loss against South Carolina in the game before Arkansas. If you were trying to watch it on television, you probably caught the end of this game if you were trying to watch Arkansas's game. I think it went to like nine minutes left in Arkansas's first half, so you had to stream the game if you wanted to watch. At Georgia, LSU, and at Texas A&M. Those are the three remaining games in the SEC. So – Arkansas has a better team than Georgia. It doesn't mean that they'll go on the road and beat them. It's always tough to win on the road. Their real chance is beating LSU at home. And from what Jerry Palm at CBS Sports does, Arkansas is going to remain on that cut line, just above it or below it, until they beat somebody that's way ahead of them, like LSU, which they almost beat 79-77. They lost to them 79-77 in Baton Rouge on January 4th. When was that? Second game of the SEC slate, January 8th. So that LSU game is huge. Texas A&M certainly playing a lot better. They've won they'd won three in a row until they lost to Kentucky in this last one. But they've got a better SEC mark than Arkansas does. So Arkansas currently is in the NCAA tournament, according to A-key brackets, respects 739, basketball central, Brad Catology, The Barking Crow, Keith McCarty, 97, KPI, RealTimeRPI.com, Bavertology, Eye on the Tournament, Blogging the Bracket, and This Ain't Bracket Science. Jerry Palm has Arkansas as an 11 seed, though, CBS Sports, a little more recognizable name, a lot more recognizable. But Jerry Palm has Arkansas as an 11 seed, but they haven't updated the bracket since Monday. So maybe Arkansas moves to a 10 seed on his. Joe Lenardi's in the same situation. He hasn't updated his bracket since Monday, but he does not list Arkansas as a tournament team or the first four out or the next four, four out. But I've got to believe that they're probably going to be somewhere in the mention category with, Jer- with Joe Lenardi when he updates his bracket. Neither of those are listed on bracket matrix. KenPalm.com has Arkansas ranked 43 in the nation, a respectable ranking, obviously. He had him ranked 47th following the win over Missouri. The NCAA basketball net ranking has Arkansas moving up eight spots from 48th to 40th after the win over Tennessee. 
moving in the right direction. So Arkansas is currently 10th right now in the SEC tie with Missouri. They split games against Missouri. That's an important spot to be in because if you're a 10 seed, that means you get a first-round bye in the SEC tournament, which Arkansas needs. I mean, playing all those games day after day for a team with a pretty short bench, I don't think that's a good situation. I think they have a better shot at advancing in the NCAA tournament because they play one game, then they get a break, then they play another game, then they get a week, and then the same thing just keeps going on and on like that. So, not a week, but a long time. So, I think that is more conducive to having a shorter bench versus playing five games in five days or four games in, in, five, in four days, depending on the seed they get. They're not – they don't have a chance to get one of the top four seeds. They're mathematically eliminated from getting anything than a higher – higher than a seven seed right now and finishing at nine and nine in SEC play. That's the best they can do. Other bubble teams in the SEC are Mississippi State, Alabama, South Carolina. They just beat Georgia in overtime at home. Kentucky, Auburn, LSU, Florida, pretty much in great shape right now to make the dance. Will they consider Isaiah Joe his factor? I mean, if you think about what Joe has done, Arkansas was 17-5 and five this season, is 17-5 and five this season with Isaiah Joe. They're 1-5 without him, including 0-5 in SEC play. Since he's come back, he's averaging 21.5 points and three rebounds. You also have to consider this. He was injured in that Ole Miss game. He scored 34 points against Ole Miss, and that's when he tweaked the knee, allegedly. That's what they say. So, in five of the next six games that he played in, he averaged, yeah. So, out of those next five games after that, he averaged 9.2 points per game and connected a 13 of 47 from three-point range. It's 27.7%. So he wasn't playing very well. And Arkansas, I think they just won two games in in that stretch. I think they went two and three in that stretch. So you had a Joe who wasn't fully Isaiah Joe playing in those games also. So now, before I say this, we have to say that Arkansas has won their fair share of close games. Okay, so it cuts both ways. They've won some close ones, but they've lost a lot of close ones. Lost in overtime to Western Kentucky, by two to LSU, by two to South Carolina, in overtime against Auburn, in overtime against Missouri, uh, and by a point against Mississippi State. But losses count as losses, don't they? So it's fun to talk about, but it doesn't matter. They're losses. What I worry about is I don't trust anybody to have my future in their hands. I don't trust anybody. And so is the NCAA selection committee really going to do their due diligence and say, okay, look at this situation with this possible 10 or 11 seed Arkansas. Are they going to go into that much detail and look at it for a team that's, you know, maybe a 10 seed or something when it comes down to it? I don't know if they will. So I don't want to leave that in the NCAA's hands. So after all this stuff we talked about, the bottom line is Arkansas has got to win. they got to continue to win games. That's it. There's no other way around it. Now, what does that mean? Possible scenarios. Say Arkansas wins all three games and wins at least two in the SEC tournament, then they are definitely in the NCAA tournament. If Arkansas wins all three and only gets one in the NCAA tournament, I would say they're almost certain to get in. If they win all three and lose the first game of the SEC tournament, I think they're likely, but I've seen too many teams that you say, this team's in, and they drop the first game of the SEC tournament, they don't look good, and they get bounced from the selection field in the NCAAs. I've seen it all the time. If Arkansas wins two of the three remaining games and wins at least two in the SEC tournament, I think they'll probably make it. If they win two and win just one game, then I say it's 50-50. If they win two of the remaining three and lose the first game of the SEC tournament, I say they're probably out. If Arkansas wins one of the three remaining games, I think the only thing that might save them is a deep run, possibly all the way to the championship game in the SEC tournament. If Arkansas goes 0-3 in the remaining three games, the only thing that will save them, obviously, is an SEC tournament championship. And that's it. That's how things stand for basketball. All right, I want to get to Danny West. We're going, to, we're going to go over my top 10 second-year players. I think we did top 10 overall players recently. But I want to get to Danny. I told him about 11.50 when we get to him. What's the traffic like here? We've got a decent number of people on. I bet it spikes a little bit when Danny brings his recruiting information because we have, guys, we've got like three days left 
before the dead period is over. Even Danny West is probably looking forward to getting back to being busy. Trey Biddy. What's up, Danny? I was, How's it going? Good. I was just going over every possible scenario for Razorback basketball, and I forgot to do something also. I forgot to tell everybody how to watch, so you got to listen to the how to watch part. Is that all right? My favorite part. <laughs> so, everybody, I want to remind you there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can join us on Facebook Live, where we always stream live. Be sure to follow the page if you haven't done so already and throw us a thumbs up if you like the content. Also available on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell so you're notified every time we upload a new video. And throw us a thumbs up there, too. Also, Apple Podcasts. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts and you like the content, throw us a five-star review. Say something nice about us. We want everybody to see Hog Sports Live when they search for Arkansas Razorback content. Also available anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast. Be sure to sign up right now for the site. It's just $1 for your first month, or you can sign up for 30% off your first year and get a seven-day free trial with that. So there's plenty of options for you, and now is a great time to sign up, isn't it, Danny? Because the dead period is about to lift. It's about to lift at uh, Sunday, 12.01 a.m. It'll be hot and heavy again buddy they're going to be bringing in visitors over the next several weeks beginning on monday with four-star quarterback Caden salter out of uh, cedar hill texas going to make his unofficial visit on monday so yeah jumping right into it next week and danny and well course, he was he was listed he was just recently in the new 2021 rankings that came out listed as the seven, yeah yeah, he was listed as the top quarterback in the state of Texas, right? Number 89 overall prospect in the country. I believe that's correct. I yeah. believe that's right. Uh, number 12 overall in Texas, uh, regardless of position. So that's elite status in my book. So big time guy there. And then, of course, next weekend, March 7th, next Saturday, there'll be several guys coming up here for junior day starting to see those names pile up on hog sports and i know we will throughout the week next week probably my favorite guy in the class dj arkansas he's going to be coming up next weekend buddy linebacker that's great That's Denton, a, what Texas. a name <laughs> ryan high school dj arkansas go check him out uh, really good kid too I, I like the kid a lot keytron jackson hey wait a minute danny we got to talk about dj arkansas for a second I was listening to the Hog Hustle, and the Hog Hustle, you can listen on 1037 The Buzz on Tuesdays with Danny West, RJ Hawk, and Pete Roulier. Do a great job on the show. But I was I listening swear. to RJ talk about DJ Arkansas, and he said he couldn't think of anybody else that was named after a state. And I'm just okay. thinking Joe Montana. I mean, first name <laughs> that comes to my mind is yeah. Joe Montana. That's not bad. So Yeah, good, good point. Yeah, I guess that'd be the only one I could think of, though. There's somebody else who was maybe like there wasn't there a uh, oh you know what there's a lot of Washingtons yeah Washington is is quite popular yeah. it's actually pronounced Washington Annie <laughs> there's an R chill out <laughs> <laughs> yeah buddy anyway where right. were we yeah we were you just gone through one and you were heading to the next guy yeah oh Keytron Jackson mm -hmm. uh, you know just to mention a couple of couple of guys here coming in next Saturday. Keytron Jackson is a four-star wide receiver out of Royce City, Texas. And I'll tell you this, my educated guess here is that he is number one on Arkansas's wish list at wide receiver at the moment. So, you know, I, I like the kid a lot. 6'2", 185. He's a track star in several events. I mean, just a absolute freak so arkansas is finally going to get a, a shot to get him up here as well as probably i would say he end up around a few dozen for that uh, junior day next saturday and then of course you know you're in the quiet period so once you start up spring ball i'm sure they're going to have several kids coming in we've got a list we're starting to compile a lot of names for the uh, spring visit list and should be fun it's a good time of year so, the dead period lifts on the first. You've just gone over some of the names that are coming in. What what is Arkansas, in your opinion? What are, what are they? What are the key areas to hit in this class? Obviously, tight end makes a lot of sense since they didn't bring in but one tight end in the last class, and the numbers are low. You always need offensive and defensive linemen. I think Pittman said four. He'd like to bring in four offensive linemen in every class. But what do you what do you think the needs are for this class? What are you identifying? Yeah, I think. 
you know, when people, somebody asked me that the other day too, and, you know, I always say it's, it's like coach speak, you know, offense and defensive line, mm -hmm. that's always going to be the first thing they talk about. So I almost exclude that from the conversation. Right. I do think Arkansas is probably going to sign four on the offensive line after taking three in this year's class. But outside of that, you mentioned tight end. I think uh, probably a couple there. Uh, everybody's looking at Aaron Outley, kid out of the Little Rock Park view, as a strong possibility there. I like the Ryan Horst Camp kid from Washington, Washington, Washington. Uh, <laughs> from Washington, Missouri. He's going to be coming in at some point this spring. So, a couple of solid options there, as well as another in-state kid, Mina, Arkansas tight end, Mason Brotherton, another guy to keep an eye on there. So, yeah, tight end would be one. Wide receiver has to be one. We've seen a couple of guys come off the current roster there, and uh, we'll see what happens over the next few weeks with that position. But, you know, they only signed one technically, and really he was more of an athlete in Darren Turner. A really, really good pickup, but still, you know, they missed on a couple of guys that are wide out. I would imagine three or four at that position. And then, uh, you know, uh, probably a couple of running backs again. So, yeah, I don't know. I haven't sat down and really, uh, you know, dived into the numbers yet, but those would be a few positions off the top. All right, Danny. Anything else you we feel like we need to go over? What's, what, what's the latest with basketball? You got any updates with basketball recruiting? No, there's not a whole lot. They are still going to evaluate some guys over the next couple of months. It wouldn't surprise me at all if, if they go out and try to get, get a guy who's, you know, you know going to bring some size. doesn't necessarily have to be like, uh, Azubuki from Kansas, you know, mm -hmm. not a traditional center type guy, but somebody with some length, uh, that would that would probably uh, be in their wheelhouse right now. At least one more guy. I know they're currently full on scholarships, but you know as well as I do, Trey, things change in the off season in basketball. You're probably going to lose a guy here or there, mm -hmm. so uh, you may have an additional spot to work with. But so far, that that list really hasn't. Uh, sorted itself out yet not a not a ton of new names emerging at the moment uh, i think they're really just focused on this season man trying to get into that postseason play the big dance danny west joining us on hog sports live you can read most of danny's stuff but you have to have a vip subscription as i mentioned is a dollar right now for your first month and things are about to really heat up he's got a nice breakdown of Basically, everybody that has said that they're going to visit this spring that's uh, that's on hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. So you can read all about that there. But really, right now, it's more like getting ready and kind of for your world, Danny, getting rested up a little bit because once this dead period ends, then, I mean, it's it's on. Yeah. Um, for you. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was looking at the recruiting calendar. I might take it easy uh, maybe tomorrow. Maybe yeah. Saturday, but uh, yeah, of course, the quiet period, as we call it, is yes. going to run until April 14th, and then the 15th of April, tax day, by the way, get your stuff together, people. Yeah, you uh, you start the evaluation period, which means coaches go out on the road, and can see these guys in in spring ball, and check on their transcripts and all that good stuff. So yeah, next few months ought to be pretty busy. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it, though. It never stops. I never want it to stop. Yeah, you want good busy. That's one thing. I mean, if, right. you're, if you're in this business, you want to be busy in the right kind of way when you are busy. But uh, yeah, so for those who don't know the quiet period, all that means is you can have face-to-face -face contact with recruits on your campus, not off campus, sure. but on campus. And then when the evaluation uh, period begins on April 15th, you get, I think it's like 167 days. Each coach counts as a day, so you send seven coaches out in one day. That's seven days in one day. But you get like 167 days to go out and recruit over like a 30-day period, or something like that. But it ends at the end of May, I believe. And some people even call it the May evaluation period, even though it starts April 15th. So Old school. Old school terminology. Yeah, there. the May evaluation period. Yeah. All right, Danny. All right, man. I think we did it. I think we did, too. Okay. I appreciate you joining us. <laughs> we'll man. see you. All right. That's Danny West. Danny, as I said, does a great job for us at hogsports.com, one of the best recruiting guys in the country, if not the best. There's nobody better, I'll say that. Nobody does a better job or develops relationships or has a better reputation than Danny West when it comes to recruiting. So if you want to read his content, go to Hog Sports. All right. Where are we at? We covered basketball pretty much covered recruiting 
You want to talk football? Everybody likes talking football. All right, so I've come out with a list of my top 10 second-year players, and a lot of this is projection. You can read the whole story in depth at hogsports.com. Now, this list does not include the following players, Traylon Burks, Trey Knox, Matteo Soli, or Ricky Stromberg. And the reason is because I included those in my top 10 overall Razorbacks list. Okay, so they're top 10 overall guys. It also doesn't include Sam Loy, who I give an honorable mention to. Sam Loy's a transfer. My number 10 Razorback in the second year class, in the class of 2019, is K.J. Jefferson. K.J., who I think made a lot of progress probably last year from where I saw him in camp, had a bit of a hitch in his throwing motion. By that, I mean, you know, he brings the ball like right here and just kind of goes up with it. There's no, there's no whipping motion. You know what I mean? You really want to bring that ball parallel, point the ball that way, and he wasn't doing that, and you get more of a whipping motion. Since he's done that, I've noticed a lot more velocity, but also the ball sails every once in a while. They say it takes three hours of practice to correct every one hour of practice. You did doing it the wrong way. I don't know if there's any truth to that, but that's what they always say. But KJ has a lot of, a lot of tools. Strong, powerful runner, big kid, really strong arm. Just got to keep polishing him up. Bo Limmer. You know, a lot of people talk about Ricky Stromberg. Bo Limmer, it would not surprise me to see him earn a starting job. It really wouldn't. Danny and I were talking about that. And I'll say Danny kind of put that idea in my head because I'd kind of forgotten about it a little bit, you know, thinking about who could challenge, you know, Bo Limmer, Ryan Winkle, Luke Jones. You know, I think those are all candidates to replace Austin Caps at left guard. Maybe Kirby Adcock. Maybe Shane Clinton. I mean, Shane Clinton just kind of fell off the map last year. And maybe, you know, with the new coaching staff, you, you could see maybe Ty Clary getting pushed at center as well. But Bo Lemmer's my number nine. Number eight, Devin Bush, who they almost lost. I can't blame Devin Bush for being unhappy with this situation. I mean, it was kind of a roller coaster if you think about it. So Devin cuts Arkansas from consideration. Then Arkansas fights their way back in. He ends up committing to Arkansas. He's supposed to enroll and sign early, decides he's not going to enroll and sign early. And then a couple days later, he decides he is, and he signs with Arkansas and enrolls early, goes to the spring, and pretty much plays second team the whole time. And then the season arrives, and he barely plays. He's getting put in for like two kneel downs against Ole Miss, some you know trash time in the other games. By the fifth game, he's already used up his four games that he can before redshirting and barely has played in those games. So I can't blame him for being disappointed with that situation. Then Sam Pittman, the day that Sam Pittman has his formal press conference, Devin Bush says he's coming back to Arkansas. So he'll be back as a redshirt freshman. Greg Brooks Jr., the other cornerback who came in uh, in that class and played last year. <clears throat> Malik Chavis also played too, but – Greg played a lot and played at the nickel spot. 5'11", 179 pounds. For me, Greg Brooks has got to get a little bit more physical because that, that position is so important in a lot of times deciding what quarterbacks are going to do in the RPO game. I mean, he's a conflict defender so often. But you, you have to be stout enough to take on blockers in the screen game, uh, to support in the run, and to cover a slot receiver. So it's a tough position to play. You need a playmaker, a guy with great instincts. Just would like to see Greg Brooks be a little bit more physical. And he was just a true freshman last year. But if he's if he's not, I think he's a safe bet, bet as a cover corner if, you know, he's not going to end up being your nickel. But you got to have somebody who can tackle who's strong in there. And I'll get to who I think could fit there in a second. But i got to get to my number six is Zach Williams. So Zach Williams, I thought – he enrolled early in the spring. I thought this was a guy that was destined to a red shirt, gave more strength. But when Dorian Gerald went down, it became pretty apparent that he was going to play. But even Steve Caldwell said they were probably going to rely on him anyway before that. 6'4", 224. I thought he had some good moments. Dealt with a bit of a knee injury. The one sack that he would have had last year got wiped out. It got wiped out due to a penalty. So I, I think you could probably expect to see Zach Williams as the third defensive end. I think he's the number three guy behind Dorian Gerald, Matteo Soli. Probably look for him to back up Matteo Soli at rush in on the right side. Jalen Catalan is a guy that I think we could consider for the nickel spot. He has got a lot of really strong instincts. He's got a more lead in his seat at 5'10", 196. You know he can cover. That might be a guy to consider if it doesn't leave you in a situation where your next best option at safety is a true freshman because – True freshman safeties just generally aren't very good. Now, we'll see with Miles Slusher enrolling early. 
that might make a difference since he's able to go through the spring. But true freshman safety scare me, and I think Jalen Catalan's the odds-on favorite to be a starting safety. But unless they like him at corner. Marcus Miller. Marcus, who's coming off pretty serious knee issue, had surgery. I guess he's going to be ready for the spring. He only played in two games last season. But this when you bring out these defensive tackles, he's probably the best-looking guy, like a get-off-the-bus the first type of guy. Him and Jonathan Marshall, Marcus is bigger than anybody else. I mean, he's 6'5", 299. Plus, he's bigger than that. But Jonathan Marshall goes about 6'3", 299, probably the strongest guy on the team. But, I mean, right there in the conversation is Marcus Miller, who I think has a chance to push for a starting job. Right now it would be Jonathan Marshall and Isaiah Nichols probably as your starting defensive tackles with T.J. Smith and McTelvin Aguim having graduated. But Marcus Miller I think is right there. Myron Cunningham is my third. Uh, does he belong on the list? He's a junior college transfer. Sure. He started 10 games out of 11 last year at left tackle and at left guard. He, did he start at right guard? And he might have. But anyway, I think that Cunningham is uh, is a good bet to start again. He played – he was listed at 290 last year. So this was Arkansas's offensive line last year. You had three guys under the 300-pound mark. Ty Clary was 285. Ricky Stromberg was listed at 266 but actually played about 276. He had an illness that he was coming back from. Uh, So he was packing on weight during the season, uh, Cunningham at 290. So you had three guys that were under 300 pounds last year. And and also, I mean, Dalton Wagner at 300, I think, 305 maybe. But that guy's 6'9". You would think that he would carry a little bit more weight than that. So they're they're absolutely going to try to add more weight on these guys, including Cunningham. I don't think – you know, Cunningham looks slim. So expecting him to add 20 pounds – and play at 310 next year, I don't think is out of the question. Number two, Traylon Smith. Traylon Smith is an interesting candidate, and Arkansas really needs him to be good because they can't just have Rakeem Boyd this year being a go-to type of back. Coaches have raved about Smith. Players raved about Smith and, and you know, in closed scrimmage stuff. So we, we, we got to see a little bit of him, but not a whole lot. He's a, not a big back, about 5'9", 190. But he's speedy, he's elusive, got great balance and vision. This is what people say, anyway. But they need him to be good. Arkansas has not had a really great running back tandem since 2014 when Jonathan Williams and Alex Collins combined for almost 2,300 yards and 24 touchdowns. 2014. Number one on the list, Hudson Henry. Again, there are four guys not on the list that because I had him in the top ten overall. But number one on this list is Hudson Henry, 6'5", 238. Definitely your favorite to start at tight end next year. Going to be relied upon a lot. The only other tight end on the roster on scholarship returning is Blake Kern, who was a walk-on. I think his only statistic is a kickoff return for 11 yards. So they're going to need both of those guys. Colin Sutherland coming in in the 2020 recruiting class, but really more of a developmental player. So that's my top 10 second-year players at Arkansas. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you like the list? Do you agree? Interested to hear what everybody thinks. So we went over the spring visit list with Danny. I thought this was an interesting article, ranking the top 20, uh, excuse me, the top 10 2020 quarterbacks. This comes from our national desk. And that's a great thing about subscribing and, and, and even being a free user with Hog Sports is our national desk. I mean, they produce articles every single day that have to do with SEC and Arkansas. Tons of stuff. Even that article about Mason Jones being one of three players now to score 30 points in a season um, in the SEC, that's a national t- that was a national story. Our national team took that. K.J. Costello from Mississippi State, I can understand that. Stanford transfer, he's going to play under Mike Leach. He's going to put up a bunch of yards. Maybe a safe pick. I might have gone with Jamie Newman, the Wake Forest transfer at Georgia, though going to win more games. Kellen Mond at number three. I always hate on Kellen Mond. I don't think he's a bad quarterback. I just don't think he's a good quarterback. I don't think he's – he's just kind of mechanical to me and not like elusive fast. And every time I say that, I think, yeah, Texas A&M fans are going to come back with, hey, 3-0 against Arkansas. Kyle Trask at Florida, the guy that replaced Felipe Franks, is number four. Number five is Mac Jones, who isn't going to end up starting at Alabama. So I don't know why he's there. I guess it's because he's the Alabama quarterback. Bo Nix at six. Ought to make a pretty good jump, but you got Chad Morris as his head coach now, quarterback coach. So Chad Morris is a pretty good offensive coordinator. We'll see how that works out. But I'll tell you this. 
if Gus Malzahn doesn't win the Western Division this year, I think this will be his last year at Auburn. I mean, they were trying to push him off onto Arkansas last year. Their fans were. Number seven, Felipe Franks, Arkansas. It's going to be an interesting situation. I think he's definitely the favorite to win the job over K.J. Jefferson. Could have two years of eligibility left. He'll have to apply for a six-year. But he's eligible based on the on the definition. Terry Wilson at Kentucky. I thought Terry Wilson could have been a little bit higher. I think they missed him last year until, well, Lynn Bowden came on pretty good. But Terry Wilson, be nice for him to have a receiver like Lynn Bowden. So I think that that will be a big return for them. So those are pretty much the top nine. I think everybody else is listed as also Rands. So I guess they have nine is John Rise Pumley. Is that how you say it? John Pumley at Ole Miss. Ryan Halinski at South Carolina is 10. 11 is Jared Garantano at, at Tennessee at 11. 12 is Sean Robinson at Missouri. Missouri. 13 is Miles Brennan at LSU. He'll probably move up. 14 is Ken Seals at Vanderbilt. That's it. That's your quarterbacks. All right. In, uh, the uh, NFL Combine is starting today with on-field work. I believe they start at 3 or 4 o'clock, but it's starting today with on-field work. Players have been in doing interviews and you know getting measured and bench presses and all that stuff, but now they'll be running 40s and stuff. And the reason that's important is because C.J. O'Grady goes today. So C.J., who was dismissed from the team after the Alabama game, and officially made public the Monday after the Mississippi State game that he was no longer with the team. And he finally spoke about it. He said, this is what he said, if I can find it. What Coach Morris – okay, I'm going to read what Coach Morris said first. We met Sunday evening. This is November 4th, 2020. We both mutually agreed that what's best for CJ and what's best for this football program is for him to step away for the final three games – and help him perform and prepare for what's next in life. We're here to help him with that. Another situation of Morris saying something that's not true. Here's what C.J. O'Grady said February 25th, 2020, which Coach Morris came out and said wasn't all the way true. It wasn't a mutual agreement. I was actually dismissed from the team. I decided to, very immature part of mine, after the Alabama game, Kind of told coaches, I don't really want to come. My body's sore. Just lame excuses. Immature. I like to call it the old CJ. I moved past that. I'm pulling for CJ O'Grady, but I've been hearing about the old CJ for the last three or four years. Old CJ keeps popping up. If he keeps popping up, he's not old. CJ's got so much ability. I mean, he's a first, second round type of talent, but he's not going to be first or second round because – of his background. I mean, he's, he's just kind of done it to himself. It's unfortunate. I've always liked the kid, especially personally. I mean, CJ's got a great personality. I've loved talking to him. He's always been really good to me. But I just have to, from a professional standpoint, call it like I see it. And CJ gets in his own way way too often. Pulling for the guy. So, tight ends, quarterbacks, and wide receivers are today starting at 4 o'clock on the NFL Network. All you could, cord cutters are out of luck, I think. If you have Hulu or YouTube TV, you're not going to be able to watch. But today's an exciting day because quarterbacks, tight ends, wide receivers. Then you've got Friday, place kickers, special teams, O-line, and running backs. And then on Saturday, you've got D-line and linebackers. So on Saturday from 4 to 11 p.m., that's Eastern time. Okay, so all these are Eastern time, so it's 11 to 10. Central time. you got D-line and linebackers, so you're going to get McTelvin Aguim and Scooter Harris on Saturday. And then Sunday, from 2 to 7 p.m., you got defensive backs, so you have Cameron Curl. I believe that's right. Is that everybody? That's the NFL Combine coming up. It's a fun time. Pete Rouillet has got a really interesting story today that's drawing a lot of looks. It is the – how long are we going here? 35 minutes. It is the decommitments at Arkansas since 2018. So there's 17 players from 2018 and 2019 classes. That doesn't include 2020 because obviously they haven't done anything yet. But from those classes who committed to Arkansas but signed elsewhere. And Pete has got a great breakdown. I believe this is a free article. It is. It's a free article. He's got a great breakdown of all the players, you know, how things happened and how they have done in the last two years. A guy like, uh, everybody remember Emmett Gooden at Independence Community College. 
signed with uh, Tennessee, made 33 tackles his first season, and then redshirted last season due to a season ending knee injury. But that's definitely one that, that they missed. And there's a couple of other guys that have done okay. I don't know if I'd say there's anybody that's just like really jumps out. There's a couple. It's worth a look. So go to hogsports.com. It's under Razorback Decommitment since 2018. Where are they now? It's a nice story by Pete Roulier. What else we got? I think that pretty much does it for the things that I wanted to talk about today. I'll say this. Facebook has a new live deal where I don't lose the comments. I can see all the comments now. So there's no more like, oh, that fell off the page. So, we're going to get to some of your comments now. Adrian Jones feels good being on the winning side again. Doug Woodruff says, watching from Tennessee and so glad to have beaten the Vols. I know that means a lot when you live in an opposing SEC state. Chase Hogan Jones says, three more games to go. Let's get the W. Trent Clark says, Joe and Jones is a dual threat. Yes, they are. It's good to have those two guys. Not many teams have uh, a, a pair like that. And really, they just open up everything for everybody. And really, I mean, if you think about it since – Joe has come back. Desi Sills has been playing his best of the season. Larry Brown says, so proud of Ethan. Ethan, best game. That was Ethan Henderson's best game so far. Rich Stagg says, whoop big suey. Geneva Dawson says, whoop big suey from Pine Bluff. Chase Hogan-Jones says, hoping we break 20. Again, says, we can't afford to lose any weapons. Hey, I want to bring this up. Speaking of weapons, should Mason Jones go pro after this season? And I'll tell you, there's two reason, There's two ways you can think about this. More exposure next year because Arkansas is going to be a lot better team. But is he going to match this season next year? Is he going to have the season that he's having next season that he's having this year? I mean, you've got some weapons coming in. You've got four really highly regarded recruits coming in. Probably I would assume Isaiah Joe coming back next year just because he was injured for so long. And – you got the sit one guys, Jody, JD Note, um, Ibi Babola, and um, Connor Vanover. So, Arkansas is definitely going to be a better team, I think, next year, but should Mason Jones come back and be a part of it? When you look at just his situation, is he going to be able to have a better season? I think it's worth discussing. Pearl, Calipari, Wade, top three, all cheated before still coaching. Yeah, I mean, some of that stuff is is still in the process, but I, I agree with you, John. I mean, it's just like, you know, Arizona and, you know, Wade's on a wiretap <laughs> and still coaching. Perry Cooper says, go Hogs beat Georgia. Jameson Roberts says, what do you think our record will be for the 2020 football season? I would Right now, I mean, there's still a lot to look at, but I would say, and I want to see what Felipe Franks looks like, but I would say, I would say the ceiling, given the schedule, is probably five games. I do not think that they will win two games. Arkansas was a better team than two games last year and the year before. They just let go of the rope. They quit on their defensive coordinator and head coach. Bottom line, you don't play Texas A&M, Kentucky, and Ole Miss the way that they did and then just get your doors blown off against Western Kentucky without letting go of the rope or Mississippi State or, you know, any of the teams that they played down the stretch. Who has a better haircut than me, Yang Long? Not a lot of people can rock this. Wupig Sui says, from Moody, Georgia, Air Force Base. Moody Air Force Base in Georgia. Hogs look great. Ready to see them this weekend in Athens. Go Hogs. Beat the dogs. This is Chad Everett. Ashton Smith says, Arkansas will be much better in 2020. We will have a much harder schedule this year, so it will be difficult. But I can see us winning four at least. A lot of the games will be closer than what people think. Jamie Gerald says, go Hogs. I was stationed there from 07 to 13. actually went up to play in Athens. Went up to Athens to watch the Hogs play Georgia while I was there. T.J. Moeller says, odds of Joe and Jones back next year, 50-50. Maybe better than that. I'm going to say it's better than 50-50. I'm going to say both of them back, 50-50, each of them back. I don't know how the logarithms and mathematics work on that, but I'll say 65-35. 
coming back on both of them individually. 50-50 that they're both back total. I'm sure the math isn't right on that, but I know it has to be something like that. Like that. <laughs> Bo Nix will go backwards in his development, says Donnie Butts. TJ Muller says we might be preseason ranked if so. I think they have a chance to be in preseason ranked for basketball next year if, if those guys come back. I think maybe they probably will. Yancey Long says, I still think there is more to the story than CJ is telling us, meaning the coaches didn't do much to help him through the tough situation. Possible. Donnie Butt says, I think CJ will go fourth round. I think that's the best possible scenario for CJ. I mean, you have to look at it like the talent outweighs a lot of other things. Jimmy Taylor says, I'm watching. Rick Dodson says, we pick Suey. David Stauffer says, how about Desi dumping threes? Desi's been shooting the ball well. I'm going to keep on going on these questions, but one more time I want to remind everybody there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. First, you can sign up at the site for $1 right now for your first month. I don't know how long this offer is going to last, but they tell me, hey, we're calling it at this point. $1 for your first month. There's no promo code, none of that. Just go to the site, top left, click join, and you will get the deal. It's that simple. Or you can sign up for 30% off your first year and get a seven-day free trial with that. Facebook Live. If you haven't thrown us a thumbs up, then go do so. Go ahead and do so now. Throw us that thumbs up. Definitely helps get our show promoted throughout Facebook. And be sure to follow the channel. Just take a minute and go up there to the top right and follow the page. Also available on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button now. Hit the notifications bell so you're notified anytime we upload new videos. Most of the people who watch the show aren't actually even subscribed to the channel. So, so go ahead and do that and interact with the content. Throw us a thumbs up there if you like the video also. Throw us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts if you're listening via that outlet or Spotify or Stitcher or any other way you can think of to get your favorite podcast. But we'd love to have a five-star review from you on Apple Podcast. So take a minute to do that if you haven't done so already. All right, back to the rest of these. Donnie Butt says Mason will go pro. I can't say I would blame him, Donnie. I can't say I would blame him. I mean, the way he's playing right now is just unbelievable. Rick Schaefer's favorite word is unbelievable. Trey, do you see Arkansas getting a bowl game next season? Probably not. And what is Sam Pittman saying about the media access to avoid fan access to spring practice? Right now we don't have any information on access to practice. I hope they open up some stuff. I don't think it's a big deal to open up spring ball. I've made the case several times that Bobby Petrino opened up every single practice in spring. I think it makes a difference for us as a media outlet because we're going to work as hard as humanly possible covering spring and covering fall camp and those types of things. The more access we get, I think the more we're able to separate hog sports from, from others. Because we're just going to, we're just going to work harder than everybody. What everybody else is doing, we're just going to do more. It's the way we've always done it. That's why we are your number one independent source on the Razorbacks. Daniel Passmore says, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying hard enough to win. He's got to toe the line. Ashton Smith, can you touch on baseball tournament this weekend? Baseball is not my area of expertise, Ashton, unfortunately, but they do play three games, I believe, in Houston. They play, what, Oklahoma, Texas, and Baylor? I think that's right. So one game each day over three days. Sorry I can't touch on too much, Ashton. I'm just not – I fill my head with football and basketball. <laughs> Danny fills his head with – Danny Danny probably – we probably could have touched on with Danny because Danny's a big baseball guy. I'll think about that next time I don't have Pete on. But I had Pete on Monday, so I didn't have him on today. Isaac Riley says, if Mason comes back next year, I feel like the Razorbacks would be dangerous. Trey, do you feel confident with all the coaches across all sports? Right now I do. Right now I like where their situation is. Obviously, Dave Van Horn's going to top the list. I think most Arkansas fans can see that Eric Musselman has this thing headed in the right direction, that they're always going to be prepared. You know, I, I, I just – I think we all see that. And I think we see the limitations that this team has. But the limitation they don't have is their fighters. So, yeah, I would say you got to be pleased right now with where they are. And women's sports all around, I mean, women's sports are pretty much top to bottom strong, aren't they? Yancey Long says, I'm bald also. Hello, my bald brother. Bruce Gann says, if Joe and Jones come back, this could be a special team next year, but I think they have a lot more of a story to write this year. If we can stay healthy and keep getting off the bench, we could surprise a few folks. Matt Hart says, good stuff, Trey, as always, shared to Hog Sports Facebook group with over 5,800 active members. Little boy, little, excuse me, <laughs> little boy. 
<laughs> Lloyd Bo Gill says, Trey, is Eric Gregory still on the football team? Haven't heard his name mentioned. Yeah, Eric Gregory's still on, on the team and uh, could contribute next year. I think he probably would have played last year since he did enroll early, but he suffered an injury. I believe he had a foot issue, if I'm not mistaken, and came back, but they'd already kind of established Colin Clay, which that one that was one of the ones that hurt, losing Colin Clay. So, all right, everybody. I think we did it. I think we had a great show today. I wasn't sure how this thing was going to go with all the stuff to talk about, but we uh, we breezed right through it. Usually I can tell if we had a great show if it went quickly. So one more time, throw us a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Just take a second and hit the follow button. Hit the subscribe button, depending if you're on Facebook or YouTube or wherever, if you're on Apple Podcasts, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and also throw us five stars. We really appreciate everybody joining you. We'll be back on Monday unless there's an emergency podcast. We do emergency podcasts if there's like big breaking news and we got to get on and talk about it. But aside from that, Every Monday, usually every Thursday, sometimes Friday, Thursday or Friday, usually Thursdays. But every Monday, we're going to have the show uh, unless there's something that interferes with it. So, all right, everybody, appreciate you joining me. Thanks to Danny West for coming on, and uh, we will catch you guys on Monday. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time.